This story happened more than 10 years ago, when I was still a student. It has a few graphic details of animal harm and graphic violence, so discretion is advised. A bit of backstory. As with most students, I was always broke and had a few ventures apart from my part-time job to bring me extra money. One of them was house and pet sitting. I have always had a love for animals, so when this couple contacted me to ask to house sit for them for the last few days before they returned from their overseas trip, as the last sitter has bailed on them and their six-month-old golden retriever puppy would be alone, I jumped at the opportunity. The fact that they promised to pay me the full two-week fee for staying there less than a week made it just more appealing. Little did I know how bad it would turn out. I got the details, got the keys from the agent and headed over to the house as it was already after 5pm and almost dark. I got to the house which was a really nice place, but it bordered on a not so good area that was and still is prone to crime. House break-ins, robberies etc. It didn't bother me much, cause you know, nothing will happen to me. I know, young and naive. The first four nights went without a hitch, watching movies, jacuzzi and just generally enjoying myself. The owners would have returned on the fifth day, fairly late at night. I went over to check on the dog, and I got a call from them about 10pm, saying their flight got delayed and they are going to stay in a hotel and do the three and a half hour drive back the following morning. They asked if I could sleep there again that night, which was fine. I was already there and had my overnight bag still in my car. I called my dad to let him know of the plans, as I was still staying with my parents, and he specifically asked what the address was. I normally didn't give them details like that, because I was old enough to look after myself, but I still believe to this day that that probably saved my life. I eventually got to bed at about 1am, and it felt like I had only slept five minutes when I was awoken to a window breaking and I could hear movement and what sounded like footsteps running down the hallway. The first thing I did was grab my phone and just hit redial. Thanks to my old Motorola phone, redialing was as simple as pressing one button, as my dad was the last number that I had called, hoping that he wakes up. I then dropped the phone in between the headboard and mattress in case my dad picks up and that he can hear what is going on. I had barely done that when the first guy stormed through the bedroom door. I could see his silhouette and he had a knife in his hand. When he saw me, he raised it and came at me. Now one thing to those that is unfamiliar with South Africa and the crime is that robberies and house invasions usually are very brutal and violent. People get murdered or tortured if they in the slightest retaliate or not cooperate with the robbers. Out of instinct I raised my legs back when he came at me, and when he came within reach I kicked both legs out as hard as I could. Now I'm not a small guy, I'm 6'3", and at that stage I weighed about 100 kilos, or 220 pounds, and I was fit and strong. My time not spent at the uni or work was at the gym. I could do an easy 250 pound bench, 350 pound squat. So when I kicked and made contact with the guy, he completely lifted off the ground and shot into the wall. Luckily the knife shot out of his hand as well. Before he got the chance to get up, I was on top of him, driving my right knee into his face and in return his head into the wall. I knew that my life depended on it, so I put in some extra force. The guy dropped like a sack of potatoes. But before I could get up, I heard the sound of a pistol cock, and I froze. It felt like all the blood drained from my body, and I became numb. I remember the only thing that went through my head was that if he shot me, I would rather die than be disabled or dependent on other people. He stood like that with a pistol against my head for what felt like hours, but was probably less than ten seconds. I didn't move, and he eventually said in very broken English, to get on the bed face down. I panicked, but thought if he wanted to shoot me that he would have already done so. So I did as he said. 
He threw a blanket over me, and I turned into a fetal position, with my back against the wall, just so if they wanted to stab me, that I had my legs and arms in front to protect my body. Now by that time I had forgotten that I had called my dad, and the guy that I had need is still down. I heard a third guy come into the room, and I could hear what sounded like Portuguese to me. I couldn't understand what they said, but I recognised it, as we used to go to Mozambique on holiday a lot, and that is the main language spoken there. The one guy tried to get the guy that I had put down on the ground, while the other started to ransack the house, shoving valuables into a big bag. It was about at this time that I heard tyres screeching, and a car approaching at what sounded like Mach 1. The car skidded to a halt, right in front of the gate, and I heard someone scream. It was my dad. The three inside the house panicked and ran out the back door, and tried to jump the fence. My dad opened fire, shooting in their general direction. Now I know my dad missed them on purpose, because if he wanted to have hit them he would, as he is not one of, but the best shot that I know. And I'm not just saying that because he's my dad. He is an ex-army special forces, or recess for those in the know. He represented SA in the Clay Pigeon World Championships a couple of years, has had various regional pistol and rifle championship titles, and is a gunsmith by occupation. I have seen him hit golf balls at 50 metres with his pistol. Politics and the racial situation in the country would have had him in big trouble if he had hit one of them. I grabbed the house keys and pressed the gate remote, and my dad called the police while he came in. I met him at the front door and we walked out to the car to wait there for the police. It took them over an hour to get there, some excuse of no vehicle available. By that time I had calmed down and started to look for the dog, but I couldn't find her anywhere. I grabbed a flashlight from my dad and started scanning the surrounding yard, and as I got to the corner I could see her laying on the ground. I got to her and saw that she was dead. Later autopsies revealed that she'd been poisoned, and the police found pieces of meat laced with poison near the fence. Poisoning is pretty standard practice in my country for dealing with dogs at a house or area that is targeted for a break-in or robbery. I was fuming and so sad. The police were also pretty useless and had a don't give a crap attitude and barely took our statements. By that time it was starting to get light and I retrieved my bag, phone and locked the house as good as I could without touching anything and drove home behind my dad. Only when I got home, I got the story from my dad's side. He said he'd answered my call, only to hear the shouting and what sounded like fighting going on, and when I didn't respond he flew out of the house and raced over. Luckily he'd asked me for the address the previous night, and he knows the area well, to know exactly which house it was. Now my dad got there pretty quickly, and he said he stayed on the line the whole time, only hanging up when he'd stopped at the gate. My parents' house is about 10 kilometres from there, through a residential area. It's normally about a 20 minute drive. The call duration was 7 minutes and 13 seconds. I met the detective there later that day, gave my statement, and they took fingerprints etc, and the owners got back about the same time. The rest of the day was a blur, as I came down from the shock and adrenaline. Now that's not where the story ends. About seven or eight months later, I got a call from the detective, telling me they'd caught the guys, and I must come to a lineup to point them out. I specifically told her that I didn't see any of their faces, as it was dark, and after the guy held the gun against my head, I was under the blanket and didn't see anything. She assured me that they'd caught them on fingerprints and will show them to me beforehand, which might not be the ethical correct way to do it, but they wanted to have as much evidence as possible against them. You will understand why in a minute. I got to the police station, and unlike you see in the movies, there was no one-way glass or separate room. They brought the guys into the room and made them stand against the wall. The one which I was later told was the leader which was the one that I had need, 
looked at me with so much hate as I had ever seen in my life. He had the eyes of someone that would slit your throat and not blink an eye. His name was Joseph Dragon Sambo. He pulled his hand up to his neck and made the slit my throat gesture. You know which one I mean. We left the room and the detective gave me a copy of his rap sheet. Amongst other things, four counts of murder, I think eight to nine for attempted murder, multiple assault, aggravated assault, over one hundred of house break-ins, robbery and rape. I was shocked. The detective told me that had I not taken him out first and fast that night, I would have definitely not have gotten away so lightly. Now this is also not where the story ends. Three days later, I get another call from the detective, saying that I should be careful, as he had escaped from custody and they have not caught him yet. I wasn't worried too much, as the robbery wasn't at my house and I had changed cars, so he probably couldn't find me. Also I got my firearm license and carried my pistol on me 24-7. I didn't hear anything after that until about two weeks later when I saw the detective in my grocery store. We started talking about the case, and she told me that he was killed during a home invasion. He broke into the wrong house, and the owner was waiting for him, pistol in hand. He shot him once in the stomach, and once in the neck, and thanks to the slow response time of the emergency services and police, he bled out on the guy's living room floor, ridding society of a piece of human garbage. I want to add a bit of info to this. All three that were caught were Mozambican nationals, undocumented and no fingerprints or ID in the system, essentially illegal immigrants, and it is of opinion in South Africa that more than 70% of all violent crime is done by illegal immigrants, mainly Mozambican, Zimbabwean or Nigerian descent. It makes it fairly easy, because none of those countries have extradition to South Africa so if it gets too hot, they just flee back over the border and nothing can be done to them. This whole ordeal has made me more vigilant, heightened my situational awareness and made me a little paranoid to double and triple check all doors, locks, etc. Also thanks to my heightened situation awareness, it has allowed me to remove myself from a few potential dangerous situations in the years after the incident but it has also robbed me of my peace of mind. I have since immigrated to a safer country, but I still sometimes wake up at night if I hear a noise. So to keep up with tradition, Joseph, we will never meet again, as you have passed. But to his cronies or anyone that wants to try something similar, please do pay me a visit. I will arrange your swift departure and reunion with Joseph in hell. And to Joseph, I hope you died in agony for poisoning Daisy. So this happened to me two weeks ago. I started university in September and therefore live in a students only apartment complex. There are four other apartments in my hallway and sometimes we just spend time in each other's apartments. In the first week of uni, I stupidly lost my keys, but it wasn't a big deal, I simply just paid for another one. After a week in my apartment, I started to notice that some of my stuff wasn't in the same place as I'd thought I'd put it. At first it didn't scare me, because I know I'm an easily distracted person. But on the day of this particular incident, I was coming home earlier than usual, with another student, Thomas, the boy that lives in the apartment next to mine. We got in, and when I unlocked my door, I saw a woman inside my apartment. Of course it scared me, but as I was about to ask her what she was doing here, she said, Oh, sorry, uh, I didn't know you'd be home this early. I'm the janitor. I clean rooms weekly. She then smiled at me and went out. I didn't know we had a janitor but this kind of explained why my stuff was moving. Thomas then noticed she had left her keys on my desk and said I should give them back to her. But when I took a closer look, 
I realized that those were my lost keys. The night passed and I decided to talk to the man in charge of the complex about this. I told him that the janitor had lost my keys, so I hadn't lost them at all, and I asked for my money back. He just looked at me in total incomprehension, and then said to me, But we don't even have a janitor. At that moment I froze. Then who the hell was going into my apartment for the past few weeks? Why was she there? We didn't call the police because nothing had been stolen, but I still searched for cameras in my apartment. You never know with these psychopaths. I haven't seen her since then, and I'm glad to know that she can't enter the complex anymore without the badge on the keys. Moral of the story? Try not to lose your keys. I'm a female and a college student, and I live with my family in an apartment in a big city. Where I come from it's pretty normal to just go to the college nearest your home. This story happened on a weekend when my family and I had planned a trip abroad, but last minute I had an exam rescheduled for that Monday, so I decided not to go. It was a Thursday and my parents and siblings were leaving for the airport and a guy that they usually hire was taking them there. My mum told me that my maid was staying with me for the weekend, and that I should call her if I needed anything. We said our goodbyes and I went back to studying. It's now around 9pm, and I'm studying in the living room with my boyfriend. My maid let me know it was getting late and that she was going off to bed, so I let her know that I was going to bed soon too. Then an hour later my boyfriend left. It's now around 10.30pm and I'm getting ready for bed. I grabbed my dog who was a small Yorkie and took her to my room to sleep with me. By 11pm I was in bed looking at my notes when my dog started growling at the door. I told her to shut up because Yorkies are generally nervous and bark all the time, or well, at least mine does. So after she'd become silent I got this adrenaline rush and stayed very still as I could now hear steps in the corridor outside my room. Now the floor is made of wood, so when I hear specific creaks, I know the steps are getting nearer my room. At first I thought that it was probably my maid making sure my boyfriend hadn't decided to stay over, but when the footprints stopped at my door, I started to freak out. I was even compelled to call out to the maid to tell her he wasn't there and that she can come in and check but somehow I knew it wasn't her. I called my boyfriend to tell him that someone was in my house. He told me to put on some shoes and check the other rooms, but I really didn't want to do this. But I'm also not going to be able to sleep until I'm sure there's no one there. I finally found some courage, put on some shoes and started walking very slowly towards my sister's room. Checking with my phone light, I can see that it's empty. Their bathroom is empty and my parents' room is empty. At this point I'm becoming more relaxed because I think I must have just imagined it. So I go into my parents' bathroom and it's also empty. But as I walk to their closet and scan the room with my phone light, I suddenly shed a light on a human figure and it was obviously not my maid. I say her name and the tall muscular body answers. No, it's Jerry. It's the driver that took my parents to the airport. I froze and tried to act cool. He then gave me some petty excuse that he was checking the windows were closed. I told him it's late and he left the house. I called my parents to verify what he'd said, as he was obviously lying, and then he had the audacity to ask me via WhatsApp if I wanted him to drive me to college tomorrow. I never saw him again after that. So I've had quite a few bad experiences with strange people in my house. From when I was younger, an old man would come banging on our door late at night, demanding to see me, causing me to have to hide in the house and not be allowed into my garden alone for years. To when a man came knocking on our door late at night, 
with a knife because he mistook our house for my neighbours. These experiences all caused me to be very cautious about opening the front door to anyone, or even being in the house alone, especially at night. But this one particular evening I'm going to tell you about was definitely the worst. It was November 2018 at around 6pm. Now I'm from England, meaning it was already pitch black outside at this time of day. I had just got home from work and was sat in my room upstairs, just watching YouTube on my laptop, when my mum shouted up to me that she was going to pick up my brother from work and would be stopping off at the petrol station on the way back, so she would be gone for a little bit and asked if I wanted to come. I said no and carried on with my video. I heard her close the front door and pull out of the driveway. I was 17 at the time, so being home alone at night was nothing new to me and I was used to the eerie feeling of it. But after around 10 minutes, I started hearing noises coming from downstairs. At first I thought nothing of it and just related it to my cat noisily searching for food in its empty bowl, until I remembered that he was sitting at the end of my bed. I paused my video and listened more at the sound of banging on the back door, and this instantly creeped me out, until it was followed by the sound of keys jangling and I just thought, oh, my mum must have just dropped my brother off before going to the petrol station, and he's just trying to go outside. So I let the noise continue as I kept watching my video. My brother can get quite angry sometimes, so the loud banging was nothing out of the ordinary, but unusually it carried on. The sound of banging and keys jangling, then dropping, then banging again. Then the fear really hit me. I don't think it's him. I walked out of my room slowly and sat on the stairs, listening carefully to the noise. It definitely wasn't him. Now, I'm a very anxious person, and everyone gets those times late at night when they hear noises and immediately think the worst. This was just one of those I told myself, so I decided to bite the bullet and just walk straight into the kitchen and face whatever it was causing the noise. But as I turned the corner into the kitchen, I heard a loud bang and clatter of footsteps run away. The cat flap had been ripped off the door, and there was plastic from it everywhere. In fear, I still tried to console myself into thinking it could be anything other than people breaking in. I sat back on the stairs, and called my mum just to check again that it wasn't my brother home early, and just in a bad mood but then he answered my mum's phone while still in the car. Are you at home? I shouted at him. No, he replied. Then my voice started to break with terror. Please be serious. Are you at home right now? No! What do you want? He angrily answered. Even though he said he wasn't, I still begged in my mind that he was joking just to get a scare out of me but he could hear how scared I was and began to worry. I explained to him what happened and he started to scream at me to call the police. He's never been the protective type, but I could tell now he was really worried and told my mum to rush back home straight away. Whilst dialing 999, I tried so hard to stay calm. I told them exactly what was happening as I hid back in my room with the door tightly locked. Then I heard talking and the banging of doors again downstairs. They were back. I burst into tears to the dispatcher out of pure fear and sat on the phone for what felt like forever until my mum, brother and police all pulled up at the same time. Everyone charged through the house to the back door and we instantly saw what they'd done. The people saw the keys to the back door on the side in the kitchen, took a broom from outside broke it in half on the door handle, got the broom through the cap flap, knocked the keys off the side and pulled them through the cap flap. Although out of pure luck, as they broke the broom in half, they also managed to snap off the door handle, making it impossible for it to be opened from the outside. Otherwise they would have got in no question asked, and I would have been sat quietly in my room completely oblivious. It was clear afterwards that they had been watching the house for a while waiting until the exact moment they saw my mum's car pull out of the drive. 
I'm not sure if they knew I was there alone or not, but I know that after they'd initially saw me and ran away, they made a choice to come back. This happened when I was about 12 years old, in Kansas, as I was sitting in my bedroom playing Halo. My parents were both out running errands, and my sister was at work, so I was home alone with my two dogs, a little terrier and a beach on freeze. Not exactly the attack dog breeds, but more like early warning systems at best. I had been home alone before, and it really was not a big deal. We lived in a pretty safe part of town that had never had any problems, other than one time where some people sprayed KKK graffiti on some public park equipment. So I was kicking back in my chair, Doritos in one hand, controller in the other. You know, full gamer mode. When I heard the very distinct sound of my door open and close, like someone had just come in. The room I was in faced in such a way where I could not see the front door, and my dogs got up and ran into the living room so I just assumed my parents were home. I shouted for my mum to confirm this. I'm a bit paranoid and I heard no response. My dogs also were not barking like they normally do when someone gets home. I thought that was kind of weird, so I paused my game and walked out into the living room, but there was no one there. I instantly felt the hairs on the back of my neck stand up. I had heard someone come in clear as day. I was not wearing headphones, I had the TV turned down and was listening to music, so I knew it couldn't have been the game. I immediately went to my parents' closet and grabbed our shotgun, like a good Midwest boy tends to do, but the only problem with that was that I didn't know where my dad kept the shells, so my plan was to fake it and hope they didn't have a gun of their own. Stupid plan I know, I wasn't the brightest kid. At this point, doubt started to kick in. Had I actually heard the door? Was it a game? But then I thought, why would the dogs jump up like that if it wasn't the door? I walked back into my living room, unloaded shotgun pointing in front of me, and I tried to call my dad, but he didn't pick up. I tried to call my mum, and she didn't pick up either. I then tried to call two of my best friends, but they didn't pick up. My 12-year-old mind immediately jumped to, holy crap, they're all dead. And so for the first time in my life, I had to call 911. The operator picked up and I explained the situation with tears in my eyes from fear. She told me to stay calm and that police were on their way. The difficult part about staying calm was that there was a hallway by my front door. I knew in my heart of hearts that there was someone in that hallway about to jump out and really mess my day up. My two dogs were right by me, also staring towards the hallway. This didn't help the fear. I stood there rooted to the spot for what felt like an hour, but was actually only a few minutes. With the operator's voice in my ear telling me to stay, thankfully my parents opened the front door. What the hell are you doing? they asked. I explained to my father the situation that I was in, so he grabbed his pistol from the front room, didn't know that was there, thanks dad, and went hunting. I always thought it would be cool to go around clearing rooms and, and stuff like a SWAT team, but I felt like I was going to soil myself every time we opened a bedroom door. We didn't find anything. The police arrived shortly after and told us that this had been happening over the past few weeks. People wait until homeowners leave, check the door, and if it's unlocked, they go in and take valuables. They said whoever it was probably left when they heard that someone was home, which never quite sat right with me, because I only heard the door open and close once. Ever since this happened, I have triple-checked every door and window lock whenever I am home alone. <laughs> 